Hi, this is Teresa with My Crochet Obsession, and today I just want to admit that I, <coughs> did, I wasn't going to uh, buy any of the Granny Square All-in-One Red Heart yarn because I really didn't care about it. Honestly, I don't do that many Granny Squares. I did one Granny Square project, and because I hate to join the squares, and it was before I learned about uh, Join As You Go, but because I don't like to join with a um, threaded needle and yarn, um, I, I just don't enjoy the process of granny squares. I don't mind making them. I just don't want to join them up. All right, but let's get started. Um, I've already experimented. Uh, the label recommends a 5.5 millimeter hook, and I have a, that didn't work for me. I've got a 5.75 millimeter, and I've got a 6 so I'm going to see if those work. I did uh, get a couple of them completed by using a six millimeter, but I do have to modify uh, the way the manufacturer recommends that um, to make the uh, granny squares. It's different than the way I learned, but it's uh, I understand why they make it that way, and it actually makes a lot of sense. I think it is uh, it's Michael Selick. On YouTube with the crochet crowd is uh, the person who helped develop this yarn he's a very talented crocheter and um, this his particular method of creating the uh, granny square is the one that they recommend and I'll point out when I get to that place where uh, what's different about it so let's get started now I'm not going to start with a chain up of a circle like they recommend I am going to make my magic ring just because I want to. I don't like to make the chain up square because it's kind of bulky. And to me, it doesn't close up completely. I'm going to use my six millimeter to start because the ones that I had success with, that's the way I used it. Okay, with my square. Then we're going to chain up five. This is where um, Michael Selleck makes his granny squares different than the way I learned, but it's not necessary. It's not wrong. So chain up five. There's one, two, three four, five. Now this counts as a double crochet and a chain two on the corner. So this is that third uh, double crochet and then the chain up and then they start the other side of the corner with the three double crochets. And then a chain two. They recommend a chain three, but I don't like chain three because I don't like the, my corners that big. I don't like a lot of holes in my crochet and that's why I don't do granny squares or this granny stitch which is called the Lancaster stitch originally a lot of the contemporary crocheters call them oh granny clusters or whatever but the original name was the Lancaster stitch and the granny squares first appeared on the scene in the 1890s and I'm assuming that it was granny Lancaster that introduced it to us I don't know for sure I enjoy some crochet history, but I forgot as much as I've read over time. And a chain two again, and we're coming around to that original uh, chain of the five. And I am coming up on my color change, so I like it when a plan comes together. And so here is our last double, whoops, dropped it. My last double crochet. And then, wow, that turned out pretty good. Now then, we're at that uh, chain up of five, which counted as a double crochet and a chain two in the corner. So we count up um, one, two, three, and slip stitch into that chain. And then, because of the way that Michael makes it the granny square, then we go right into with our chain up. Now, you'll see I'm not quite at the color change. And so, I need to make a modification. And this is the way I do it without taking everything out. I am going to do an extended double crochet here. So, I'm going to yarn over twice as if I was making a treble. But I'm not. I'm making a double. But that'll take up a little bit more yarn. And so, I've got three loops on the hook here. And I'm going to pull the loop all the way through there. It's not going to make a big difference in the big scheme of things. When you get done, you won't even see it. I'm going to do it one other time because I can see I'm still not to my color change yet. And then let's see if that's going to work for us. Chain up. 
well, in, slip stitch into that chain. I'm having a hard time getting into that. Oh, there we go. Now, let's see if whenever we pull up our slip stitch, see we're still not quite there because I don't want the black to show here. I want to go ahead and... So I'm going to go back one more time and I'm going to put an extended double crochet in the middle of the previous Lancaster stitch. So I'm going to end up doing it several times. And extend a double crochet and then a regular double crochet. Chain two. Extended double crochet with the double loop, double yarn over. And again, with a double yarn over. Okay, that's going to get me where I want it to be. Okay. Okay. And now slip stitch in to the square. That's better. I can live with that. Now chain up five again. And your three double crochet. Now in this round, I did, that, that's what was funny about this yarn for me, is that I don't consistently do the same thing as far as do I chain between my um, three double crochets or not. I'm going to go ahead and pull that um, uh, slip ring, and whenever you use the two uh, yarns the way I do, the two loops, and, and then still crochet over, you have to kind of pulled in two phases. Okay, there we go. It's closed. And I, I will go ahead and chain one here and put my three double crochets. As I was saying, that's what was strange about this yarn for me is I started out, um, you know, putting one chain between my um, Lancaster stitches and then later in the next color, I couldn't put it. I couldn't put the chain in between. So whenever I uh, left them off, then it worked. And see, I don't like this chain in here because it, again, it creates a large uh, hole in the granny square and I'm not crazy about that. I like a denser fabric, but I don't want to go down a stitch size, uh, I mean a hook size because it makes the fabric, it affects the drape of the fabric. So. I usually choose stitches, and it, it depends. If I was making something for summer, a cotton top or something, cotton, with cotton yarn, I might very well like a something with a little more openness to it, but as a general rule, I do not. And two chains in the corner. And that's typical of the way I make the granny square. Okay, we're coming up to the join here, and I don't see my color change yet. Now it's coming. Now, this is a little awkward to me, but it works. Um, it, it seems like you have to put that, uh, those double crochets on top of that chain space, and it creates a little bulk there, and I don't really care for that either. Now, we're, there's my color change. Let's see. It's going to be too much. I can already tell. One, two, three. And that one's this one. Slip stitch into the chain up. See, I'm going to need to go back. And see, the way that he does that, sometimes that little stitch there gets covered up. I've got a little bit before the uh, color change. So I'm going to go back and put one extended double crochet here and see if that gives, if that eats up the gold so that I can have. And then slip stitch into that chain. Okay, I can live with that. Now we're going to slip stitch one more time into that ring. 
into that corner space. I can live with that. Chain up five again. Actually, I kind of like this method of making uh, the way the corners are done because the way I do it, uh, there is a, a chain in the top to get over to the corner, create some bulk right here. So I actually like this method. If I could remember to do it is the problem because I may not make a granny square for, you know, two or three years and I'll not forget. Okay, I put one uh, chain in here, but I'm not gonna put a chain in the next one. I already had that experience and I don't wanna have to frog it all out. Only one of them gets a chain and it really doesn't show in the big scheme of things when you get the square finished. <laughs> chain here where's my color change oh this one's subtle because it goes into the red I didn't see it but see I'm gonna have way too much so I'll go back and put those chains back in I don't I guess it's me because surely the yarn the colors are measured more accurately than a human crocheter is. See, I've got a lot there, so let me go back and put those chain spaces after that. And like I said, it doesn't happen in every one. I don't know what it is. I do notice that whenever I'm working on a project day after day, the same one, that sometimes I'll crochet for about five minutes when I come back to it and then frog it out and start over again because my stitches are different. It's like I need a little warm up before I begin. Chain two. Chain. I'm going to remind myself to chain this time. I think it's going to work though. On a positive note, I do think the color ways in this uh, particular yarn are really beautiful. And I can see in some uh, early videos in December when they released this, December of 2023, when they released it. They had some other colorways uh, that are even more beautiful. Um, there was one with a ivory, uh, then a soft tan and a baby blue. And, oh, I love that one, but it's out of stock everywhere and I don't think they're making it anymore. And there was one other one. I can't remember the colors right now, but if you go online and you really search back, uh, I think you can even go on maybe yarnspirations.com and whenever you go to the yarn it shows colorways that we can't get anymore. But anyway, what they do have available I think is very pretty. But I just started with this one so I bought a couple of other colors. All right, I'm at the color change. All right, so with the chains it worked fine. One, two, three, slip stitch in the third chain from the beginning of the row and there we go. All right, so let's stitch into the corner and chain up five again. And three double crochets. And 
and I'm fairly certain that in this one I didn't have all of the chains. But I guess we can go ahead and put them in, and then if we don't can't use them, then we'll come back. See, another thing, if I'm finding that I can't get all the way around this uh, round, this red round and make it work, I could frog it and then just change hooks to this 5.75. It's just a little smaller, and then it might work. I haven't done that yet. We might do that. In fact, let's do that today if this doesn't work. In freeform crochet, we use different size hooks in, in a complete work, so that isn't extremely unusual to me. Also, if you're making a sweater, let's say, or any kind of a top or a dress, and you wanted it to like come in a little bit at the waistline, you can in, uh, decrease the hook size and, and just still keep your stitch count the same. And it'll just come in a little bit and it's a real nice makes a real nice tapered fit so really changing a um, hook in one um, motif or project having different hook sizes really isn't unheard of but it seems a little odd in uh, one granny square to have two different hook sizes. Sorry, I had to pull up some more yarn. Yarn management is a thing. black in there and I don't want that. So as I said, let's go ahead and frog this out. So all right, let's start at our chain up and use that smaller hook and let's see if we can do it. Two chain up a five and then turn for your corner. familiar with this um, particular yarn in the comments why don't you tell me what your favorite colorway is and what um, you would make with it I think I would use multiple colors like you know get four or five skeins and maybe make something I'm wondering and I think I saw somebody online um, make a different type of granny square and it worked. In fact, I think I saw the African flower, which I really like. I like the granny squares that have not as large of holes in them. I don't know. That's just me. The label does recommend a 5.5 millimeter hook, but I really had no luck with a 5.5. .5. Let's see if this, and see I started it out with a six millimeter and was coming up okay, but in order to keep the same um, one chain between the granny stitches and then the two chains in the corner, I'm hoping this 5.75 works. It's a little bit of color bleed before the color change. I've noticed that on every time, because I, I made three different, I made three squares before I made this one with you, and I noticed there was that color bleeding on every single one of them. Color, every color, right a little bit before 
the new color starts, there was some bleed of the color. Now, let's see, we're coming up to the color change. And we've got two double crochets before we slip stitch into our first chain. Okay, I, I guess I can live with that. I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna drop this last chain to see if I can get my color to come up where I want. Because I really didn't want any black showing until I do the chain up. Mm. All right, I can live with that. Come up three chains, slip stitch into that, and start your next row. All right, begin. Chain up five. This is the last color. this yarn is made for the granny square there's nothing to say it, it I mean it's just a striping yarn like uh, let's see favorite stripe or um, even the ombres you know you can use you don't have to make it into granny squares um, there is someone I, I did see a video on YouTube of someone that um, did corner to corner with it and it's very pretty you don't have to just use it for the granny stitch. And according to um, the manufacturer, Red Heart, or Yarnspirations is who makes Red Heart, according to the manufacturer, you get 14 squares out of one skein. But, uh, Almost everyone that's used made up a whole skein says they're getting 15. So it's better that they put a little extra yarn in there to, to come up short because the labels on yarn are not always exactly right. It sure is nice whenever they have more yarn than what they say they the label says it has in it. But I have had yarn before it was short see now something I did here but I'm coming up to the blue the new color to start the new I did something there that I'm not happy with but I'm gonna have to take out I'm gonna take out this um, chain between that granny stitch because I can already see I'm running out of yarn the color is gonna come up the color change which is navy blue is already coming up I'm not gonna chain there either. I'm gonna go over here. I missed a chain there to start and see, there's my navy blue already started. So I'm gonna go back. I'm just gonna take out all of these chains in between on a little bit of it. And do the whole thing. I'm just not.
If you've used this uh, yarn already, let me know in the comments how you liked it. And if you um, kept it and actually made something, let me know what you made. If you have a recommendation of what you would like to see me make in this yarn, let me know that in the comments too. There are some things I just don't like to make, and so I don't want to start something to, with the idea of, okay, I'm going to um, make it with you, and then I don't follow through and finish it or whatever. I don't want to do that, so. All right, I'm at the navy blue, but I'm going to call it close enough and go ahead. But you see, it takes some finagling to get the colors to come out right. Their inspirations bought Red Heart. I think the yarn is better quality. I like the way it feels. It is uh, more refined than the old Red Heart was. So I thoroughly enjoyed making this granny square with you today. It was quite an adventure. I really loved exploring this colorway, Black Moody Cherry. If you got anything out of this video today, I'd appreciate if you subscribe and click the notification bell.
Thank you for your time today. I thoroughly enjoyed making this granny square with you. It was quite an adventure. I enjoyed exploring these, this colorway black moody cherry. If you found anything valuable today, I hope you'll subscribe and hit the notification bell to see all of my tutorials. And here you have it, Red Heart All in One Granny Square in the colorway Moody Black Cherry. I would, do think I'm going to go back, I'm going to frog out this last row of black and take out all of my chain spaces between the Lancaster stitches in order to get that last corner just right. I just can't let it go with the navy blue on that corner. And I'm going to need that navy blue when I make my next square. I've also attempted to show you a few ways that you can modify your stitches in order to make your color changes come up at the right place. And we did that today with changing hook sizes. Uh, raising the height of our stitches with the extended double crochet, as well as omitting chains between our Lancaster stitches. And those are just a few of the things that you can do. You might even want to have three chains in your corner spaces rather than two, as I have done. But all of these choices are up to you. Another thing that I'm noticing is that it's taken over 30 minutes on this video, and I do realize I've been making explanations. But if I had to spend 30 minutes making each granny square when I was making a large project, I'm just not sure if this would be my choice of yarn. I don't hate the yarn. Don't misunderstand me. Thank you for your time today. I thoroughly enjoyed demonstrating the all-in-one granny square yarn. If you found anything valuable in this video today, I hope you'll subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you'll know when I have new tutorials up. Keep calm and crochet on.